Good morning, afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the theater class. It is May 18th. Um, we are going to be focusing on sound design this week. Yay, sound design. All right. Let's share my screen. Go away. Don't go away, Matt. Just go away. Okay. So, sound design. All right. We're going to start off. I'm going to play you a couple of trailers and then we're going to talk about them, okay? So, what you're focusing on and what you're listening for is the sound and how the sound affects. 1964. Mm hmm. does that preview make you have? Like with thinking of the music and how it sounds. This is where you talk, people. Cheerful. Cheerful? Lighthearted. Okay, so it's obviously probably a cheerful music movie. It's lighthearted, right? Makes me feel kind of nostalgic. All right. So I'm assuming everybody knows the Mary Poppins. So I, I have it at a different twist here. What do we think about this Mary Poppins trailer? Same honestly, movie. Honestly, I would prefer watching that one than the other one. Why? Because I'm a fan of scary and it, well, if I was born in that time, it obviously would be would have been creepy for me. Okay. Right. So the soundtrack behind it definitely says horror film, creepy, scary, right? Yeah, face tough. So changing the sound design definitely changes the Mary Poppins movie, right? And what we think of it. Oh, so the other shots don't help. Okay. I don't suppose they uh, told you anything in Denver about the tragedy we had up here during the winter of 1970. Well, man, they 
Uh, Charles Brady is the winter caretaker. And he came up here with his wife and two little girls, I think about eight and ten. From what I've been told, I mean, he seemed like a completely normal individual. But at some point during the winter, he must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. He ran amok and uh, killed his family. Like I said, Jerome, and that's not going to happen with me. Huh? Yeah? Do you really want to go in the hotel for the winter? Sure, I do. Be lots of fun. Yeah, I guess so. For some people, uh, solitude and isolation can, of itself, become a problem. So that's from the movie The Shining, if you know it. It's a horror film. Just not two eyes and shining. Uh, what do you guys think of the music on that one? The sound? Very scary, very high tense, very suspenseful, very bad much. vibes. Bad vibes, bad vibes. Haley, you keep shrugging. What are you shrugging for? Well, that, that, type, of time, that type of sound is that I have heard regularly used in horror. So <laughs> it started. I really no longer am scared by that. Right. But in your brain, though, it does trigger that you're supposed to be scared, whether or not it's played out or not. Yeah. You have to think this was back in the 80s, so it wasn't played out then. Mm -hmm. Right. But it triggers that you're supposed to be fearful, right? Mm -hmm. It's setting the mood for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a different preview for The Shining. Meet Jack Torrance. I'm outlining Same the writing project. He's a writer looking for inspiration. Lots of ideas. No good ones. Meet Danny. He's a kid looking for a dad. There's hardly anybody to play with around here. What's up, Doc? Jack just can't finish his book. I know it's going to sound rather dramatic, but there's no way to make it even. Is asking to see the video because he doesn't know what's really going on. I'm not showing the video on purpose because we're focusing on the sound design of it and like what the sound sounds like, okay? And what you get from the sound. Here's to five miserable months. But now, sometimes what we need the most is just around the corner. Yeah. I'm your foster father. I do anything. Climbing up on South Free Hill. I love it. I could see the city light. My heart going boom, boom, boom. Sun, he said. So again, same movie presented through a different sound effects scheme, right? And sound design. What do you guys think of that one? Again, this is where you guys speak. Meet yourself. But, uh, hi, meet. 
Yeah, Huntley, a guy who just wants to have a nice, wonderful, comfortable life. Right? Okay, so that's The Shining remixed kind of like a romantic kind of comedy. And if you've ever seen The Shining, it is definitely not a romantic comedy. Um, definitely up there on the horror film scale. So the point of starting off with these is to show like how we present something really matters on what you think about it, what the preconceived notions are. Like Haley had said, was you know she knew the horror sounds, even though it was kind of played out. She knew in her head that it was to be a horror film. So it sets your brain and it sets your mood, right? What it is you're going to be experiencing. So what is sound design? The sound design uh, completely affects our scene. Um, it like sets us up, shows us what's going to be happening, really lays out what is going to be going on, right? It's those preconceived notions in your head. And it impacts our audience, makes us feel different ways, changes the mood, can take us from happy to sad to excited. Music is super important. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Baden. Uh, Baden says it's called priming, right? I'm sure, Tobias talks about this a lot with his stuff, right? Um, and it's just as equally important in theater. Um, we have to consider how our sound affects everything in our audience and how it impacts our scene. Um, we have to look at things like volume, whether something's really soft or really loud. Um, and then there's a lot of technical aspects that can go into sound design. Right. I'm going to move this slide up. So when I learned about sound design in um, college, we looked a lot about like how sound design started. So back when sound design first started, we had, we didn't have like the sound boards and the mixing and the electronics things that we did now. Folly was a big director. Um, playwriter, producer, person. Uh, there's a whole genre of folly art, and a lot of our sound effects were done this way through our slapstick comedies, through what we heard. So, I want to give you a taste of kind of like how things are done. Um, and theater still use this kind of sound design today when coming up with different things. My name is Cami, and I am a Foley artist for the Intergalactic Nemesis. And a Foley artist is a sound effects artist, essentially. Foley comes from Jack Foley, who popularized sound effects in radio dramas, which is, uh, which is how we end up with that term here. Uh, with Nemesis is a, a fusion of radio drama and, um, and comic books. So, uh, but I do Foley art, but I also do the sound effects, which means that, for instance, the Foley, Foley has a, a few standard um, elements to it and that the, those are the footsteps and a door and a body thud and a wind machine and then when you get into sound effects you move out a little bit further with uh, like some of these pieces of electronics that we have that create some of the bigger sounds um, those aren't traditional pieces in foliar so um, that's what I do with black Nemesis. I like this one a lot because I can put my whole body into it and it feels pretty good and you can do a lot with it. It can start, you know, it can come rolling in or it can just be a crash, which is a lot of fun and it gets a good reaction every time, so. Some of the sound effects that we have on the table are sounds that are, uh, for instance, if you want to make shoe steps, you use shoes. But we have to create sounds that we don't necessarily have like that. So one of my favorites is the train sound. Um, we use macaroni and cheese, and it has to be um, Kraft macaroni and cheese, the, the regular kind. You can't have like Annie's organic bunnies or any of these other different shapes. It actually matters. So uh, then this is a train whistle that I whittled. And um, so, I'm, so it sounds like this. And that one's a lot of fun. That's a surprise for people. Um, 
And another one that's in that same vein is this baby book. This is what we use to create all the fires in the show. Oh, and it's, just rub it like that. And then it's a fire, it's magic. There's also this in here that you have to try to avoid because that really ruins the tension. Um, we also have our door, which is a standard Foley piece. And it's a tiny door that still creates the same sound as a big door because when we get George to mic this, all the sound effects, he can take it to the next level. So that's pretty cool. Um, this one, <laughs> this one is tricky, but I think it will work. I believe this is our creek box, which is another standard sound effect in Foley. Um, and we, our company made this as well. Yeah. All right. It's getting there. So that's when you're going to someplace scary. It creaks. And then, um, what else do we have here? We've got some some cool things that are like electronic little toys. That's a Zygonian show. And this is another one that people like. This is for a, like a zapping, right? That happens, it's a zapping. Like a and um, I'll give you the wind machine, which the company also made. It's pretty. a lot of fun. So a lot of times our sound effects that we have in theater have to be created, you know, in during the thing. So you will use like shoes for walking, you know, the closer you get to a microphone, the closer, you know, further away, things like that. Coconut shells are great for horses, especially if you've ever seen any Monty Python movie. Uh, coconut shells are always used for our little clacking horse sounds. Great. Um, all of those are used live a lot of times with theater in our arts. In the slide, uh, I know we watched Wally when we were talking about like expressions and you know things like that. And Wally is also really, really great for sound design because there's not a lot of talking. A lot of it is mostly sound design. I've uh, put in two videos for you guys to watch on your own time. And if you get through at least the first part, that's great. It's maybe 10 minutes long. I suggest watching that um, and seeing how Pixar created the Wally -E soundtrack or the Wally -E play track for the movie. Right. Um, so real quick, uh, just show you how some songs kind of affect our mood. So Lit Mobile just sent me this solar wireless battery pack. I'm excited. Let's see what's inside. How I really like about the yeah, guys. <laughs> Hello. 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 We have our sad kind of piano, you know, more haunting kind of effects when you want sad. Affects our mood. These are examples of how music affects mood, how sound affects mood. So again, we have our sound. What mood do you think matches this one, guys? Ratatouille. <laughs> okay, but what kind of mood, not movie? That is a mood. <laughs> is it supposed to be like a homey feel? Maybe um, investigative? Maybe. Kind of playful, joyous, investigative, you know. It's definitely on the happier side of things.
What do you guys think of this? So long. What'd you say? Very solemn. Solemn, right? Baden, what do you think? Josiah is somber. Not much somber, kind of intense. Not a pleasant feeling of happy. Gray tones don't help. What do we think of this? Suspenseful. Very adventurous. Right? Good. Very adventurous. Very action. Exciting. Right? Good. Um, on this slide, you have a page of sound effects that you can use, as well as making your own if you have macaroni and cheese, apparently, but the original noodles. No fun noodles. Um, so FYI, so there's a resource for you. So let's look at your assignment for the week. The real reason you're here listening to me talk. What am I have to do? So you have a Greek myth sound assignment. You're gonna research a Greek myth and choose. You're gonna discuss and decide the mood you want to convey. How do you want your audience to feel? You're gonna find or create at least four different kind of music sound files to convey your chosen mood. Excuse me. You're going to do a creative video presentation sales pitch. So basically what this is, is I am trying to go ahead and find my next great sound designer. And I need you guys to pitch it to me. Why, you know, what are your samples? What do you think you're trying to sell yourself as a sound designer to me? <laughs> right? So I need a sample of your work and I need a presentation of your work that's creative and exciting. Okay. Um, it needs to be around two minutes in length. You can either, you know, film it, slide it. There's lots of different ways for you to do that. In your presentation, you must conclude and consider the following. A brief summary of your myth. I don't know what your myth is. You got to tell me about it, yo. Make it exciting. Make me want to, like, be involved with your project and your myth and hiring you. Uh, remember, this is a sales pitch. Um, it's what's one of the most important elements. Why is sound important to the myth? You need to tell me that. Like, why, why do I care? Right? You need to tell me about the moods you're trying to convey and how you want the audience to feel. What music sound did you choose to convey it for your myth and why? Explain your choices. Okay? So you're demonstrating your knowledge of sound. Again, you're selling yourself that... You're going to be my next great sound designer. Are there any questions on your assignment for the week? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? So it's clear? Okay. All righty. Well, thank you for coming to class today. The assignment is up in Google Classroom where you are turning it in at.